Hi, Happy New Year. It's eight days into 2021 and I am already so tired. All around me are familiar faces. Hi, my name is Trish and in this video I will be talking about my most disappointing reads of 2020. So a couple of things before I start. First is I am making a distinction between this videos and the previous videos that I did. I'm not calling it the worst books of 2020 because I don't want authors jumping into my comment section and attacking me. I know that's old drama but we'll never know and I am much too fragile for anything dramatic right now so this is me making sure. I'm calling it my most disappointing reads of 2020. I'm not saying necessarily that these books are bad, although some of them are, because I am not the right person to say that. I am saying, however, that I was disappointed by these books. I did not enjoy them. Thus, this list, which leads me to the second point that I want to make. Everything that I say here are my own opinions, so please don't take it personally. I have no credibility whatsoever. I am just someone who likes to read books and likes to talk about them. I have seven books in this list and they are not ranked. They are arranged chronologically based on when I read them during the year. So the first book in this list is If Castles Appeared in the World by Kenki Kawamura. This is a translated work and it's about a man who finds out that he only has months to live and so he makes a bargain with the devil where a day is added to his life but for each day something in the world needs to disappear. The story really intrigued me but I ended up not having any strong feelings for this book and I think it mostly had to do with the translation. I'm not an expert on translated works but I do believe that a lot was lost in translation. Reading the book it was pretty clear that the author was writing in a tone that was light and casual, sort of conversational, and yet the translation was very formal. The choice of words and the structure of the sentences was very... It read like a textbook and it really took away from the atmosphere of the scenes and just the overall tone of the book. It was hard for me to sympathize with the characters. It was hard for me to sympathize with the things that were going on because the translation just sounded so formal and distant, which was too bad because I really did find the story interesting. The next book in this list is Heretics Anonymous by Katie Henry. So the main character is an atheist who attends this conservative Catholic school where he meets and befriends a group of outcasts, each with their own religion or faith or belief. And so they form this group called Heretics Anonymous. And throughout the story, they do some anonymous level stunts to reveal the hypocrisy in their school. I was really excited about this book because it's not often that I find YA contemporaries that talk about faith or the lack of faith. And so I was eager to read about tolerance and acceptance of other people's faiths and beliefs. And while the book did do that at first, the subject matter gradually became a backdrop to the romance that was going on between the main character and one of his friends. And uh, that really disappointed me because I thought the romance took away from the gravity of the story. It was really frustrating for me that a lot of the things that happened in the story hinged around this romance. I, a bit of a spoiler here, uh, but the ending really was one of the things that made me mad because in the end there really wasn't any realization or any learning moment for the main character because the opinions that he formed about religion and about faith still hinged upon the opinions of his love interest. So it was really disappointing that this romance became the focal point of the book when there were other subject matters that were more compelling. The next book in this list is Faker by Sarah Smith. And I read this along with Shalaya, Isa, and Kate. And I absolutely hated this book. I don't know where they got the strength to finish this book because they actually read it. And I just skimmed the book, but it was still one of the most painful weeks of 2020 for me. 
So the book has a Filipino-American protagonist, and normally I would be excited for the Filipino representation. But um, two chapters in, my excitement died. My excitement flatlined, died, and was buried. I just couldn't get over the main character's uh, weird fascination with white skin. There was an abundance of scenes where she kept talking or thinking about the love interest skin. The choice of words, the way the skin was described was just so gross. I cannot look milk the same way again and that's really hard for me since I really loved eating cereal. The romance was also very lackluster and annoying and that's coming from someone who absolutely loves enemies to lovers. I just I just thought the romance was forced. There really wasn't much of a chemistry between the main character and her love interest. The plot was dragging and all over the place. One moment nothing was happening and then the next moment everything was happening. It was just one big shit show and I absolutely hated it. The next book in this list is The Cry of the Lake by Charlie Tyler. Did I get that right? Charlie Tyler. This book was another really bad experience for me. It was so bad that my subconscious took the initiative to wipe this book off my brain. I honestly cannot remember anything about this book aside from the fact that I had a really bad time. So this book is a mystery thriller with some fantasy, some domestic drama, some everything, which really is one of the problems that I had with this book because for me it felt like it didn't know what kind of book it wanted to be. It's common for books nowadays to have intercepting genres, but those books usually work. Like the intersection of genres is harmonious and smooth and fluid. But with this book, I could really tell when I was jumping from one genre to another and it was very tiring. I'd like to tell you what the synopsis is, but I honestly cannot remember. I do have some vague memories of what it was about. But again, this book was just such a mess and I cannot gather enough brain cells to make a coherent synopsis. So I guess I'm just gonna leave a good reads link down below if any of you wants to read it. Another problem that I had with this book was that in most mystery thrillers, when there's a twist, it's usually an event, a revelation, or a conclusion that ties up everything together and then all of the events from the past make sense. This is the first mystery thriller that I've read where the revelation that was supposed to tie everything together did not make sense and just ended up making everything more ridiculous. Just overall a very bad time. The next book in this list is Those Who Hunger by Owen Banner and I was excited about this book because the synopsis said that it was an Amish vampire story. I did not expect that it was an Amish vampire story. Like the vampires are Amish. That is a take on vampire stories that I have not encountered before so yes I was excited and the first parts of the story were not that bad. In my opinion there were a lot of unnecessary homophobia and uh, sexual assault so trigger warning for that. Some of the scenes were gory which I like in my vampire stories. Then it went downhill about uh, halfway through the book. It just went from having all these thrilling events into nothing. Like there was just so much talking that really didn't drive the story forward and everything just became so boring and so dull. I actually DNF this book and I don't know if it's right for me to put it here since I really didn't finish the book but uh, it did disappoint me so I'm putting it here. The next book in this list is I Hope You're Listening by Tom Ryan and this for me was my most disappointing read because it was one of the books that I was really looking forward to reading. This is a mystery thriller that follows a girl who experienced something traumatic. When she was a child, she and her best friend were ambushed by a couple of strangers but 
only her best friend was taken away and so years after she's still dealing with this trauma and so she's secretly hosting this podcast that talks about missing cases and through this podcast people involved with these cases are able to get help and so this leads to her past being brought up when another little girl in the town that she's living in is kidnapped in the same manner as her best friend before. It's a really intriguing synopsis. It really got me hooked but I was really disappointed when I read the book because I don't know it was dull, it was dragging, the characters were very two-dimensional. The characters felt less like characters in a story and more like actors in a play because each character sort of had this role and their personality revolved around that role. There were some scenes that uh, tried to give more depth to these characters but uh, they fell flat. These characters just didn't inspire anything, any emotion for me. Also uh, the twist in the story didn't work well for me because it sort of came out of nowhere there was no foreshadowing about it there was there wasn't anything hinting to it or leading to it so it was a surprise and not a pleasant one and the last book in this list is goddess in the machine by laura beth johnson which i read with salve and kate i am not a big sci-fi fan but this book really caught my attention because the synopsis was very interesting it's about a girl who wakes up from this you know one of those fake sleep things so she wakes up and she thinks it's just been a hundred of years which is her scheduled alarm to wake up but she finds out that it's actually been a thousand years basically everyone she knows is dead and she's in this time and place that she is not familiar with and the people think she is a goddess so we follow her as she tries to survive in this new world while also trying to figure out what happened why she woke up a thousand years late the idea was very unique but the story felt very unoriginal <laughs> for me i am so tired of sci-fi stories set in the desert why why is it always desert why can't we have a sci-fi story set under the sea the plot was very um, predictable the characters were i don't know they're they're not too bad but i also think they didn't you know achieve their full potential there's also fat rep in this book because the main protagonist uh, describes herself as chubby and at first i was really excited and happy about it i don't know i don't know if i'm the right person to really talk about this but the main character constantly um put herself down regarding her weight like there were these uh passive aggressive insults towards herself there were these jabs about herself that really came out of nowhere the tone gradually turned from yay fat rep into yay fat rep i can't explain myself but that's really how it felt i don't know it's just the main protagonist demeaning herself because of her weight wasn't really challenged or addressed well in my opinion so there's that so that is it for my most disappointing reads of 2020 um i really don't know how to end my videos anymore so bye